Good morning. I want to talk today about uh, what I call Trump v. Biden, Trump versus Biden. That's going to be the title of my PowerPoint slideshow. And before I get started, just uh, one or two caveats. First of all, we're still several months away from uh, the November 5th election. And I don't really know for sure that both uh, Trump and Biden are actually going to be the candidates. Remember, they're both of an advanced age. Uh, either one could have a, a health crisis between now and then that could cause them to withdraw from the race. Also, there's a possibility that Trump could be in jail. So it's uh, very difficult to say what will happen between now and November uh, with any certainty, but uh, for purposes of this presentation, I'm going to assume that both of them, both of them are the candidates that they both make it to November 5th. And I'll talk about how uh, they may be impacted by things. Now, the second thing I want to point out is uh, astrology is always only half the picture. Astrology is only a cosmic weather report. The other half of the picture is people, the person and individual will. Okay, so uh, two people can be affected by the same weather, but they can make very, very different decisions uh, regarding that weather. Uh, if a hurricane is uh, coming uh, to your uh, beach home, well, some people can make wise decisions, pack up and leave, board everything up, and get out of the way of that hurricane, and they'll survive. Others can say, nah, I'm just going to sit here and ride it out, and they may drown. So a lot of what happens depends not just upon the cosmic weather, which astrology uh, tells us about. It also depends upon the decisions people make. Thus, I don't really know for certain who is going to win the election on November 5th. All that I can talk about is the weather uh, surrounding that election and the weather surrounding each candidate and events that will take place before that election. Okay, well, with all that said, let me share my PowerPoint and then we can get started. And this will take uh, just a second or two. I've got to get rid of some panels here so that I can see what I'm doing. So just bear with me. I've got one more to go. And I'm just about ready here. Okay. This is going to be Trump versus Biden part one. In part one, I'll cover the polls, the charts, the felony conviction of Donald Trump, and the first debate. Now, in part two, I'm going to cover the Republican National Convention, the Democratic National Convention, the second debate, uh, the uh, October solar eclipse just before the election, and then we'll look and see how things look on election day. All right, so let's get started. We'll begin with the polls. As looking at uh, the polls just yesterday, uh, June 12th, 2024, I go to uh, a site called realclearpolitics.com and they give sort of an average of uh, several recent polls. And in these recent polls, Trump leads Biden by about half a point. Uh, half a percentage point, and I'm sure that that is not statistically significant. So right now, it's it's a, a toss-up. However, if we include the uh, third-party candidates, uh, Kennedy, Stein, and West, then Trump uh, has a little bit bigger lead of about 2.9 points, percentage points in the polls, so it looks like these third party candidates are going to draw away from Biden support 
more than they do Donald Trump's. It takes uh, 270 electoral votes to win the election. And as of June 12th, 2024, it's estimated that Trump will get 219 electoral votes for sure. Uh, Biden has 202 electoral votes for certain, and 117 are a toss-up. So, no clear winner at this point. Now, let's look at some relevant charts. First of all, the chart I always like to use for America is not the July 4th, 1776 Sibley chart that many astrologers use, but the July 2nd, 1776 chart for the passage of the Declaration of Independence by the Continental Congress. And this was actually the date that John Adams thought Americans would celebrate in the future. Uh, the July 4th date is, that is the date when the Declaration of Independence was printed up and disseminated amongst the people. And that is why uh, we tend to look at July 4th as Independence Day. The reality, however, is that the creation of America was not just a single event. It was a series, the result of a series of events, of events that took place over time. You'd had not only our Declaration of Independence being passed and distributed, but later you had to have Articles of Confederation written up, and then that was replaced later by the United States Constitution. So there are several different moments that went into the creation of America and the astrological charts for each of those moments can be relevant. So I don't see this as a July 2nd chart versus a July 4th chart. I say that both of them are relevant. I just have a slight preference for the July 2nd chart. Now, if you prefer the July 4th Sibley chart, here it is. Uh, you can pause this, uh, copy the birth data if you want, set up the chart with software on your computer or for free at uh, sites like astro.com, and you can use this chart. Now, as long as I'm not talking about house positions or the position of the moon, which uh, going from July 2nd to July 4th, it's moved from Capricorn into Aquarius, as long as I'm not talking about those things, then whatever I say is going to tend to apply to both charts. So there's not going to be that much difference, only occasionally. Okay, now let's take a look at Donald Trump's chart. I've talked about this chart a lot in the past in several different videos, but let me give you a quick overview. Donald Trump was born right before a lunar eclipse. Uh, he has his sun almost exactly opposite his moon. Both of those planets are very strongly conjunct the lunar nodal axis. And the planet Uranus is also conjunct his sun and lunar nodal axis. And that is all in Gemini in his 10th house. What does this do for Donald? Well, in his case, it makes him very erratic. It makes him uh, almost bipolar or manic depressive. His mind is always jumping around uh, from one topic uh, to another. It also, because of this conjunction with the North Node in the 10th house, it gives him an insatiable desire for power. Okay, now let me also point out this while I'm thinking about it. How a person reacts to their astrological chart, that depends upon their own maturity. Remember, I said just a, a little while ago that astrology is only half the picture. It's the cosmic weather. The other half is you, the individual, how you react to that weather and the decisions you make. If you are a very evolved person, a very mature person, then 
you can be in control instead of this cosmic weather being in control. And the more that you are in control, the more that you control your decisions and your future, the more difficult it is to predict with uh, any certainty the result of any astrological influence. And I see uh, President Biden, Joe Biden, as being pretty much like that. He's been through a lot of adversity in his life. He's learned from it. He's grown from it. He knows how to roll with the punches. He knows how to turn astrological lemons into lemonade. So when you see a lot of uh, difficult aspects in his chart, a lot of difficult transits, you can never count them down and out. Uh, he has a way of dealing with these things. On the other hand, Donald Trump is much more predictable when it comes to his horoscope and to uh, astrological transits. Uh, because he does not roll with the punches. He does not control his own life. Uh, he's not as mature as I observe it, as uh, Joe Biden is. And so uh, when something is upsetting him, when the cosmic weather is rocking the boat, you can be pretty sure that his personal boat is going to be rocked and he will be upset. Consequently, a more evolved person might take an aspect like this, Sun conjunct Jupiter conjunct uh, North Node in Gemini, they could express incredible creativity, uh, incredible genius and ingenuity, which upon which they could build their own success. But in Trump's case, his just his mind tends to just bounce from one topic to another. So he's not really in control of this. He lets the stars control him. That makes him much more predictable. Okay, let's move on from that. He also has Saturn conjunct his Venus. Venus is the ruler of his 10th house of status in society. And this is the one place where Trump does exhibit a lot of discipline when it comes to his own uh, position and status in society and in the world. He orchestrates that very carefully and in a very disciplined manner. It's interesting that he says that he often goes with his gut because Saturn and Venus are in Cancer, which rules the stomach, rules the gut. So a lot of the time he is guided by his personal feelings about things. And that has worked out well enough for him that uh, he has been successful in his business in spite of several bankruptcies and uh, failures of various sorts. Okay, he has Leo rising and he has uh, Mars and Leo conjunct his ascendant. Uh, this puts the focus on himself personally quite a bit, his own ego, his own adulation. It makes him a very active person and also makes him a very angry person uh, a lot of the time. He has a Chiron conjunct Jupiter close to the cusp of his third house. This is interesting. Most people will associate Chiron with wounding, but as I have pointed out in other videos, it makes no sense for us to have a drive to wound ourselves. What Chiron really is, it orbits between Saturn and Uranus. It's a bridge between the visible plants and the invisible ones. And so what really is, it's this urge within ourselves to transcend the world we can see. It's that little voice that looks at the world and, and says, surely there must be something more than this. Chiron urges us to go beyond the boundaries of the visible world, and it takes us into a far more transcendent and far more joyous world. So Chiron is really this very joyous light, this very transcendent light. 
when it functions at its uh, best, at its highest. And we see it that function that way uh, in the life of uh, Pope Francis, where uh, he has a uh, son Chiron opposition, where he has integrated the two uh, after he had a severe illness triggered by uh, transiting Saturn activating that opposition. There's a very severe bout of pneumonia where he lost most of one lung. But afterwards, he became a Jesuit and then a priest and went on to become Pope. He is the classic example of the wounded healer who became a shaman. He learned to integrate the two poles of that opposition, his son, his soul, and self, with Chiron, uh, this higher, more transcendent energy. And even though I don't agree with all of his uh, positions on every subject, I look at him and I see a person who really has love, light and love in his heart for other people. And that's what happens when you bring out the best of Chiron. Uh, but what happens with a lot of people is they're not ready for this light. They're not ready for this higher joy. They have these hard Saturnian shells that they're encased in, and those shells have to be cracked before the light can enter. And that is where the wounding comes in. Now, when you have a good aspect between Jupiter and Chiron, either a conjunction, sextile, or trine, that tends to bring out the best of Chiron. And so if I was just looking at this birth chart and not knowing who it belonged to, I would think that this is a person filled with a, a lot of light. And to some extent, Donald Trump does uh, seem to possess something a little bit more transcendent. But I find this very interesting. I think he uses his inner light not to heal other people, but to manipulate other people. Uh, Jupiter conjunct Chiron brings out the sweet side of Chiron, and he uses that sweet side to sweet talk other people in order to enhance his own status. He has this nice trine to the plants in the 10th house, and this is very interesting because it shows that good aspects can sometimes be used in bad ways, just as bad aspects can be used in good ways. The tension created by bad aspects or hard aspects can motivate you to accomplish all sorts of wonderful things. But here you have an example of what I would normally think would be a very positive aspect of a person's life, but when I look at his life, I can see that transcendent side there, but he uses it for manipulation of others, in my opinion. <clears throat> okay, now if we look to see how uh, Trump's chart interacts with this uh, July 2nd, 1776 chart for America, and a lot of what I say here is going to also apply to July 4th charts. So if you prefer that chart, not a problem. But look at this. Trump's Chiron is strongly conjunct uh, natal Saturn in this chart. Chiron can often manifest as wounding. Saturn represents structure. And it's in... Libra, so that's relationships with others. I know of no one who has wounded the structure of American democracy and our relations with our allies more than Donald Trump. Now, if you're a supporter of Donald Trump, you can look at this differently. You can say, no, this is him draining the swamp. He's tearing down structures that need to be torn down. So there's two ways you can look at it. You can take your pick. But as I see it, he has really wounded 
the structure of American democracy and wounded uh, NATO and our relationships uh, with several allies. Now, he also has Neptune very strongly conjunct the ascendant in this July 2nd chart. So this applies only to this particular chart. But this says a lot about his ability to mesmerize the American public, to present them with a dream and convince them that that dream is reality. Uh, he also has Neptune making a square to natal Jupiter. This suggests that growth that is produced is in many instances going to be a false growth. And we see that, I think, with the uh, massive tax cut that he passed when he was president. Uh, a lot of people like that because it put money in their pockets, but only at the expense of adding trillions of dollars to the national debt. And the tax cut was more generous for the wealthy than it was for the middle class and the poor. So the rich got richer, and eventually the poor are going to feel the impact of that increase to the national debt. And I'm sure eventually we all will, but the middle class and the poor, we're gonna suffer the most. This can also represent misinformation that Trump puts out there about other people in power that perhaps he doesn't like. Uh, Jupiter is pretty close to the midheaven here. So it has to do with status, people with power in our uh, country. Now, let's see. Every time a new president is elected, a lot of astrologers will set up the chart for inauguration day. They'll set up a chart for the time that the president-elect is inaugurated and fully becomes president, and they'll use that to say some things about how the administration will go. I think perhaps even more important, though, is to look at the chart and the transits on election day, uh, because that is the day in which everyone is engaged. It's not the day on which everyone votes now. In more and more states, uh, we can do early voting and voting through mail. So it's often the whole month from October through early November that voting takes place. But nonetheless, uh, the day on which we vote is a very important day because that's usually the day on which we find out who the next president will be. And so I think uh, if we look at the transits on that day, compare it to the USA chart, that can tell us a lot about how that administration will go. And if I do this for uh, 2016, when Trump was elected president, you can see that transiting Pluto was square natal uh, Saturn. So this suggests, uh, you know, death, destruction, transformation of structure, infrastructure in this country. Well, what we do know is that Trump uh, did a lot to tear down and try and transform the structure of American government. Uh, he defied a lot of norms. He was changing and transforming all of that. Okay. Now, also, notice that transiting Uranus, it's pretty strongly conjunct natal Chiron. This could be sudden and unexpected wounding to our country and also to our relationship with allies. And that certainly happened during that Trump administration. Uh, again, we have transiting uh, Neptune, making a square to natal Uranus. The positive side of Uranus is technology and genius and creativity. The, ne the negative side is revolution, revolt, rebellion. Neptune can be misinformation. And 
Trump had certainly used misinformation to foment a lot of revolution and rebellion among his followers. And then we have transiting Chiron uh, square, natal Mars. And this can be a lot of wounding that takes place through violence. Okay. And we saw that uh, right at the end of his administration, very strongly with that January 6th insurrection. But the main thing is, there's a lot of squares and tensions here in this chart uh, for the Trump administration. If we look at uh, what the transits were on election day and take that as an indicator for what's going to happen during the administration for the winner of that election. Now, there were a few uh, beneficial aspects going on. Uh, at this time also, so let's see, what do we have? Well, Mercury made a very strong uh, trying to natal Mercury and sextile to natal Moon. And I think this has a lot to do with the tax cut. Mercury is in the second house which has to do with money and possessions. And so he, he put more money in people's pockets and made them feel good. That's also undeniable. Uh, Transing Saturn was making a strong square to natal Saturn. So he was able to get a lot of his uh, legislation passed. Uh, he was able to get started on constructing his border wall didn't get that many miles uh, constructed, uh, but he did uh, get a lot of designs picked and a lot of money put into it. And he was able to control a lot of the things he wanted to control. So, uh, again, whether things turn out good or badly, that depends on people, that depends on the person in charge. What we've seen here was whoever got elected, there would be a lot of challenges, a lot of tensions to deal with. Other people could have dealt with those tensions, I'm sure, more successfully. And the overall outcome would be better. As it was, there's a lot of stress in that first uh, Trump administration that many of us felt. And there were some good aspects which uh, helped him get done some of the things he wanted to get done. Now, if we look at Trump's transits for the coming year from June 2024 through May 2025, you can see about half of the transits create tension, about half of them ease tension. So half of them are bad, half of them are good. And as I always say in astrology, it's not like mixing hot water with cold water and getting lukewarm water. It's more like a tossed salad. You got the things you don't like sitting right next to the things you do like. Okay, if we look at these outer plant transits from Saturn on out, uh, a few I have marked here is really worth noting. Uranus conjunct midheaven, this is where there can be changes to Trump's status. And that is active this month of June. It's also going to be active in November, December, and into January and February, March, and part of April of next year. Uh, Uranus square Mars. This can be changes uh, in his personal life and things that make him very angry. That's going to be pretty strong July through October. And May of next year. Saturn square Uranus, since Uranus is in its 10th house, and since Saturn uh, constricts things, there can be frustrations or constrictions on Trump's status. That happens in August of this year, and first part of February in 2025. Chiron squaring his natal Saturn, that can wound 
uh, his uh, control of things and his status, his personal status. That is in effect uh, from about second half of June, about right now through mid-September, and again, mid-October through mid-May. So Trump has a lot of challenges coming up. And I could have also flagged Saturn square moon followed by Saturn square sun. That is going to affect him personally in March of next year. And Chiron squaring his Venus, that starts to come into play uh, in latter half of May, I'm sure it will continue and go beyond this one year range that I'm looking at. This can be wounding to his personal status. Okay, some of the good influences. And what I see both astrologically and reality is Trump is being wounded a lot in the courts right now, but his followers are providing a lot of healing, both. Uh, emotionally and financially. So both those things are going on simultaneously. All right, now transiting Chiron, trying his moon, that's going to be really healing. And that's going to be strong in October of this year and in March of next year. Uh, Uranus sextile his Saturn. That is going to be good for his status and his control of things. Getting a little bit of that in June. That's pretty strong in December, January, February, March of next year. Uh, Chiron sextile his son. That is healing. That is in effect strongly June through September and April of 2025. And that's some uh, of that healing and financial support he's getting from his followers. Uh, Uranus sextal venus this will be good for his status uh that's strong from second half of june right now through end of july uh october through november it's exact on november 5th that bodes well for him on election day november 5th is election day in america guy fox day in england by the way and let's see, this sexual is also strong in April of uh, next year. And you can see he has a, a lot of good aspects that will be exact in April of 2025. That bodes well for him. But in the latter part of April and in May, uh, some of these uh, harder aspects will also come into effect and can impact him. So it's 50-50 for Trump. It's a mixed bag. And what we see happening in reality is, as I said, he has a lot of legal problems right now, uh, a lot of wounding in the judicial system, a lot of uh, support from his uh, supporters. OK, if we look at Joe Biden, this chart is also very interesting. He has Sagittarius rising. And what we see most of the time is this very jovial personality. And Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. Also could be called Jove referring to uh, Greek gods, Greek and Roman gods. And so for the most part, for most of his career, we've seen this very smiling face, this very jovial person. But Jupiter, the ruler of Sagittarius, is in his eighth house, which has to do with death and uh, transformation. And people with a strong eighth house influence, they often experience a lot of drama or trauma in their lives. And Joe Biden has certainly been through a lot of trauma. Uh, early in life, uh, he had to experience the sudden death of his uh, first wife and one of his children. And so he's gone through a lot of adversity. But he has learned from adversity. He has learned how to turn 
as I say, astrological lemons into lemonade, how to roll with the punches. And consequently, uh, I can't predict how hard aspects, tense negative aspects are going to impact him as well as I can with Trump. Trump is far more predictable, as I say. If something is uh, poking at Mars in his chart, you know he's going to be very angry. If that happens with Joe Biden, Biden is more mature. He may feel angry, but he can decide how he's going to deal with that anger, how he's going to express it. And he can find uh, positive ways to express what is going on. Okay. Now, Biden's son, as well as Mercury and Venus, are all in Scorpio in the 12th house. And things in the 12th house tend to be hidden and concealed and not easily seen. And Scorpio is ruled by Pluto, which is a very powerful planet, it is literally the planet of power. What does this mean? Well, Joe Biden is a person who is comfortable with power. He can take the, the reins of power and control that power and lead us in good directions. But this is a side of him that until he became president, uh, he kept it pretty much hidden from the American public, I do believe. I certainly didn't see it. Uh, I saw just that Sagittarius, that jovial side of him. But as president, he has really uh, taken and wielded those reins of power, and he has a whole slew of accomplishments. He's uh, restored our relations with our allies, restored NATO. He has uh, passed a lot of uh, transformative bipartisan legislation and done a lot of things that are uh, going to benefit America. And right now, despite the inflation, which has been global, uh, he has brought it down. Uh, and America has the strongest economy in the world right now. It is leading the world. Okay, he has Saturn in the uh, seventh house, Uranus, conjunct the cusp of the seventh house. And the seventh house has to do with relationships with others, marriage in general. And this is where he has experienced some of the sorrows and restrictions of life. Again, the sudden death of his first wife, Uranus, uh, the sudden change here, that loss of a wife and a child. Those are the kind of adverse things he's had to go through, but he has grown from those. He has Neptune in the 10th house, which has to do with status in society, our social environment. And Neptune has some very good aspects from uh, other planets here. Consequently, uh, Joe Biden is a leader that has vision. Uh, he provides a lot of far-seeing vision in his leadership uh, of this country. So this, uh, these are things he has expressed very positively. If he expressed it very negatively, it would be confusion, lack of direction. And in his case, I see vision as the manifestation of this influence. Now, if we look at how Joe Biden's horoscope interacts uh, with this July 2nd, 1776 chart for America, he has Jupiter uh, conjunct natal Mercury opposite uh, natal Moon and uh, Pluto. And basically he's able to talk to people and connect with them both verbally and non-verbally. Uh, he's a people person rather than, you know, I'm the powerful one. I'm your leader. You know, I, I have the status and you don't. He connects with them on a person-to-person -person basis. This is reiterated by his moon making a sextile to natal Venus. Uh, people can feel 
his empathy. He also has Sun, Mercury, and Venus in the second house, which rules uh, financial matters, making a trine to Mercury and to Moon and Pluto. And as I said, he's helped restore the American economy. It's leading the world right now. And economists will tell you right now, uh, all the major indicators, economic indicators in America are looking good. Uh, where the disconnect arrives is the fact that we had this uh, sudden surge in inflation which has now been brought under control without bringing about a recession. That's kind of a first for America. But even though inflation is not raging right now, prices are still higher than they used to be. Uh, and so people still feel it in the pocketbook. There, there's a lot of strength in the American economy, but the average person is not necessarily feeling it. Now for people still working, Wages have tended to keep up with inflation. Uh, but for retirees like me and others, uh, you know, times are tough economically, even though the economy is good. So that's kind of the paradox of things. And that's causing uh, Biden, uh, certainly causing him some support. Joe Biden, interestingly, also has Neptune conjunct the cusp of uh, America's first house, the rising sign in this July 2nd, 1776 chart. It's not as strongly conjuncted as uh, uh, Trump's Neptune is, but this is very interesting because I think both Trump and Biden expresses influence, essentially the same influence, but they express it differently. In Trump's case, he uses this influence to mesmerize the public and convince them that uh, false statements are true statements, that he actually won the 2020 election when everyone who's looked at seriously says, no, he didn't. In Biden's case, he provides vision to Americans. Biden governs not only with respect to the issues of this day, but the issues that we're going to have to deal with in the future. And so he's uh, passed bills to renew America's infrastructure in the long term and bills to deal with the impact of climate change in the long term. Okay, now, here I'm looking um, at the transits to the USA chart on election day. And so, regardless of which candidate wins, this says something about what they're going to have to deal with, uh, the good and the bad. And I'm going to look first at the negative transits. And let's see, what do we have here? Oh, I'm sorry. This is a 2020, this isn't 2024, uh, the upcoming election. So this is going to be about what Biden had to deal with when he was elected president. Uh, and transiting Chiron, is conjunct the cusp of the seventh house, squaring Jupiter, which is near the, uh, actually conjunct the midheaven. So there is some wounding from others uh, that Biden has had to deal with. Internationally, a lot of this has come from Russia and it's also come domestically by, uh, from Republicans who have tried to impeach him and who are opposing uh, his policies in many instances. Now we also have uh, Mercury 
making a square to natal Mercury and to natal Moon. And this has uh, interfered with uh, Biden's communication with people, despite the fact that the economy is really doing quite well by the standards by which we usually judge those things. Uh, Biden has trouble communicating that and other accomplishments he's made to the people. On a personal level, uh, they're still seeing that grocery prices are higher than they used to be. They're having a harder time uh, getting bills paid. So despite all the good things about the economy and all the good accomplishments of the Biden administration, there is difficulty communicating that to the people. And then we have transiting Venus, making a square to the midheaven. Venus, uh, it's the pleasure principle. It's things we enjoy. As a result, it tends to be things we value. And it rules more the, the nonverbal right brain than the logical and verbal left brain. So this has more to do with uh, how people are feeling rather than their logical thought. And so people aren't uh, always feeling that good with uh, the Biden administration. So these are the challenges that he's had to deal with as president of the United States. Now, there are also some uh, good aspects going on. Sun in the second house, which rules money, finances. It's a very strong trine. Uh, to the natal sun. And this represents the strength that he's actually brought to the American economy. Uh, even though it hasn't all filtered down to the individual level, as I said, all economists will tell you this economy is really very strong. It's leading the world. It's doing better than any other uh, economy in the world right now. Uh, we have transiting Pluto making a strong trine to natal Neptune. This represents a lot of the transformative vision that is present in the legislation that Biden has gotten passed. As I said, he is trying to deal not only with the problems of the present, but also the problems of the future. And he has started things which can uh, help our future be a little brighter. And then transiting Venus, it is conjunct this natal ascendant. So there are also going to be a lot of people who connect with Biden and who like him. Uh, there are some who disagree with his leadership. And at the same time, they may like him uh, quite a bit. So in many ways, Americans are feeling better than they used to feel. But there's also, let me go back one, there's this disconnect uh, in communicating the message of how good things actually are. It's hard to convince people of that. And he's had to deal with some very uh, difficult uh, foreign policy decisions. Uh, you know, issues with uh, Russia and uh, issues with... Uh, turmoil in the Middle East right now. So uh, it's been quite a ride. A lot of good things have happened under Biden, but there are also issues there to deal with. Okay, if we look at Biden's transits for the coming year, from June 2024 through May 2025, uh, he has about twice as many good transits as negative transits. Now, on the negative side, I have a few highlighted, and let me start out with transiting Pluto square the moon. Uh, Pluto first got close to exact square back in summer of uh, 2023, and there's a lot of awful things that can happen during this kind of a square because the moon rules his eighth house of death. 
and transformation. So that's obviously the worst that could happen. Biden could die. He could also have a serious health problem. He could also experience a lot of turmoil and anguish. But the moon is in a fifth, fifth house, which, among other things, rules children. And the issue that has come up every time has been under Biden. It came up last summer as Pluto got close to an exact square to NATO Pluto. And it's come up now uh, with the uh, recent conviction of uh, Hunter. And there have been reports that uh, Hunter's problems have caused him a lot of anguish, personal anguish. Uh, even more so than some of the international problems he's had to deal with. This is what's kept him up at night more than any other problem. And this is going to be an issue from June through August and also December and January of next year. Now, he also has Saturn in opposition to his midheaven, which means that it's uh, conjunct his, the cusp of his fourth house, the fourth house rules the home, his personal environment, and his family. And that is what he is having to deal with as a result of uh, his son Hunter's problems. So family issues are on his mind this June and July, and also next February. Quite often when Saturn's at the bottom of a chart, that's when someone retires from public life and leaves the limelight. That's not happening in Joe Biden's case. He's staying in the limelight, but he is, to all accounts, putting a lot of his personal focus on his family right now and the problems with his son, Hunter. Now, transiting Uranus is going to be in opposition to his son in August, September, part of October, and again in May of 2025. And this can result in uh, changes in one's personal life. And uh, let's see, changes as relationships with others. This is at 27 degrees Taurus, 34 minutes. Let's go back a second here. Look at Biden's natal chart. Oh, I got to go all the way back to the beginning for that. Okay. So this is going to be in a sixth house. That has to do with work and health quite a bit. There's always a possibility of a health crisis uh, when Uranus comes into opposition to his son, which is here in the 12th house. Uh, but like I said, the good thing is Biden, he's a mature individual. More so than others, he can choose how he responds to the cosmic weather, to these astrological influences, and he can turn astrological lemons into lemonade. Uh, that's America's turn. Let's get all the way back to Biden's. Where am I here? Just give me a second. There we are, Joe Biden's chart. Yeah. So, sorry about that. <laughs> I was pointing to the wrong one there, but Uranus is still going to be in his sixth house and Taurus in opposition to Sun in his uh, uh, twelfth house. I think I was looking at a, a chart for America here. But anyway... Let's get back to where we were. And right over here. So Uranus in opposition to a sun. Uh, this could be some health problems. This could be when he's, uh, he's going to be more stressed, a little bit more manic. Uh, could be a little bit more erratic, but we just have to keep an eye on him in August and September and see what comes up, and we may never know because he is adept at handling these negative aspects. Okay, now if we look at the good aspects over the coming year from 
June 2024 through May 2025, there are a lot of them. So a lot of things are going to go well for him. Uh, Saturn trine, Mars, Neptune trine, Sun, Neptune trine, Venus, uh, Pluto trine, Uranus, Pluto trine, Neptune, Uranus sextile, uh, Jupiter, Pluto sextile ascendant. This one in particular will help strengthen him physically, and that's going to be in effect February through May of next year. A lot of these good aspects involve Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, which means that these higher, more trend <coughs> ascendant influences are going to be impacting them. So again, he's going to be a person of creativity, vision, and transformation. Uh, and that can all have very beneficial as impacts on our country. Uh, in October through February of next year, Neptune making a trine to his son, that is going to give him more charisma, uh, more vision. And let me go back and see if I can find Joe Biden's chart real quickly. I want to point out that in his uh, birth chart, he has a uh, Sun making a trine to his Jupiter. Neptune will be down here making a strong trine to his Sun. I'm looking at maybe primarily orbs of one degree. Uh, if I use a little bit wider orb, then natal Jupiter can be brought into that trine also, and that's going to complete a grand trine, which will bring a lot of... Uh, you know, higher vision and balance and justice into his life, into his action. A lot of charisma uh, touching him this year. So uh, that will happen during that uh, election season. So that is going to bode well for him. And when we get into the actual election, into part two of uh, this presentation, I, I think we'll see both candidates, if they both make it to the finish, and finish line, they're both going to have some challenges to deal with. They're both going to have some very beneficial things going on. And I can't really say uh, which one is going to win the election. I think Biden has maybe a slight edge, but uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, how things are when we get to that point. Astrologically, I know how the cosmic wind is blowing, but I don't know how each person will react to those influences. But as we get closer to the election, we'll have a better idea. Okay, let me talk a little bit about the felony conviction conviction of Donald Trump. This is a chart for May 30th, 2024, the day on which Trump was convicted. And if we look at his transits on that day, we see a lot of stress. Transing Uranus conjunct natal midheaven, that represents a change in his status. It could go up, could go down, in his case, down. Transiting Uranus square natal Mars, He's very mad at that verdict, and that's going to make him more erratic. Transiting Chiron and Mars over here square natal Saturn and Venus. He has been wounded. His status has been wounded. Transiting Saturn over here square Uranus as 10th house. Again, this puts restrictions on his status. And lastly, we have transiting lunar node, nodal axis, right here, conjunct his natal chiron, 
which is in his second house. So this intensifies the wounding and the financial bleeding on his part. Okay, now on July 11th of 2024, Trump will be sentenced. Uh, however, I think the sentencing, as far as I understand it, it, it happens on this day. That doesn't mean he's going to go to jail on that day uh, because surely his lawyers will appeal uh, a lot of his convictions, all of his convictions. And so there'll be probably uh, several months before these appeals are finished and uh, his sentence is carried out. But one of the uh, main things we see on this day, transiting Chiron, very strongly scoring his natal Saturn. This suggests wounding, this suggests restriction, and it's going to affect his personal status, his status in society, since Saturn is uh, closely conjunct his natal Venus, which rules his 10th house. So I think Trump is going to be strongly wounded on this day. He has transiting Mars square natal Mars, and it's going to be conjunct his uh, natal midheaven. And I'm looking mainly at outer plants now, but transiting Mars is also going to be uh, conjunct his uh, midheaven. So it's going to be drawn into this square. There's going to be sudden change in his status, which is going to make him very angry and affect him very personally. So those are the negative things going on. He also has transiting Chiron, sex, making a sextile to his natal sun. That is going to bring healing. That's going to be more beneficial. And transiting Jupiter is sextal his natal Pluto. Uh, Pluto rules his fourth house, which is his home, his family. And uh, his family business. Jupiter is also going through his 10th house, which is status. Jupiter is considered a benefic. It's uh, beneficial to a status. So that is also going to be a positive influence. Now, I always uh, point out, I've pointed out uh, already in this uh, presentation that these aspects, they're not like mixing hot water with cold water to get lukewarm water. It's more like a toss salad. He's going to have the hard things sitting right next to the good things. He will certainly get uh, support from his followers, uh, both emotionally and financially. What I suspect, though, is that Trump will be wounded I can't say if he's going to be given just a pardon or, uh, or a hefty financial fine or if he'll receive some jail time. I am expecting some wounding that will be severe enough to impact him very personally. But I'm also expecting that maybe the judge will hold back a bit that he will take into consideration the fact that uh, Trump is a former president, that he's uh, probably going to be the Republican candidate and so forth. And there are other things the judge will probably take into consideration, uh, which will ameliorate the sentence a bit so that Trump will probably get tough enough a sentence to impact him personally, uh, but not the most severe sentence that he could have gotten and maybe not as severe a sentence as uh, what uh, Michael Cohen received uh, for lying to the government. Not as severe a sentence as he could have, could be given. So that's what I think will happen. He also has Neptune making a quincunx to his Ascendant. Uh, 
Neptune tradition rules Pisces, the 12th sign. So it's connected among other things with confinement. It's in the eighth house, which has to do with some drama, trauma, and transformation. And the queen functs, it's a 150 degree aspect. It usually requires change and adjustment. And it's making this aspect to us ascendant. So it's going to affect this personal life. So I suspect that whatever sentence is handed down is going to require some personal adjustments in Trump's life of one sort or another. Uh, and I'm expecting the sentence, while it probably won't be as severe as it could be, it will probably be severe enough to uh, affect him personally and affect his status and his uh, schedule in society. But we'll just have to wait and see. This is what the weather looks like, but the judge could decide something different from that. Remember, as I say, astrology is only half the picture. Free will is the other half. Uh, how people decide to respond to the cosmic weather, that's what ultimately determines what will happen. But this is what the weather looks like. Okay, now when we get to the first debate, that's going to be on June 27th. It's going to be at 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So in Scottsdale, Arizona, where I live, that is going to be uh, 6 p.m. This is a chart for that day. Uh, for those who are interested, we have a few squares, and we also have some good aspects, some trines and sextiles. Now, I want to look at how these transits will affect each candidate. Uh, with regard to Trump, on the hard side, I see a uh, transiting Chiron, square Saturn. So that's wounding and restriction. And so he is going to be entering this first debate, probably still wounded from his legal difficulties. Uh, Uranus is going to be conjunct his midheaven, so that sudden changes in status. Again, this could relate to his legal difficulties. Uh, his son will be making a square to uh, his natal Neptune in his case. I expect this to stimulate more falsehoods and misinformation. Uh, coming out of his mouth during the debate. But overall, uh, from the hard aspects, this debate could cause him some wounding, some change in status, and a lot of misinformation coming out of his mouth. Now, on the good side, he will have Chiron making that strong sextal to a sun, and Uranus making a strong sextal to Venus, which rules his 10th house. So among his supporters, they're going to say he won the debate, I'm sure. I think he will uh, get a lot of emotional support and, of course, financial support uh, from those who want him to be president uh, for another term. So it'll be a mixed bag. A lot of people will look at the result and say he's been wounded. He's told a lot of lies and his status will change but his supporters will say no we love him we support him and we're going to stick with him and here's an aspectarian uh, showing all the aspects to trump's chart on that day during the debate time uh where the orb here is uh one degree okay now if i look at biden some of the uh, troubles he's been dealing with will probably uh, follow him into the debate as well because the aspects being formed here are currently being formed with this chart. He has uh, Pluto uh, square his moon. Uh, probably Hunter Biden will be brought up uh, during the debate. And I'm sure that Trump will refer to 
President Biden has crooked Biden and the Biden crime family and so on and so forth. So uh, you'll probably have to deal with that in the debate. Uh, Saturn in opposition to Midheaven. Uh, personal problems again with Hunter and family are probably going to be brought up in order to diminish his status as president of the United States. And he's going to have his son making a sesquiquadra to his natal Mercury in the 12th house. This will work to make him stutter a bit more and make some more gaffes as he's talking. But if we look at the good aspects, Transing Mercury is going to be making a trine to his natal Mercury. And so while I think he will make some gaffes, uh, I think that he's uh, also going to overall speak uh, very well. Now, he also has uh, transiting Uranus making a sextile to his natal Jupiter and transiting Jupiter making a sextile to his natal Pluto. Those are going to work out for him. I think he will be excited, but also he will be expressing a vision for America's future. And this is reinforced by transiting Pluto making a trine to his natal sun. So this is power, transformation. This is vision. And so by and large, I think uh, uh, President Biden will do uh, quite well in this debate. He'll make a few gaffes, but I think he'll speak well. And he will uh, talk about technology. That goes along with Uranus. He will talk about uh, transforming America. That goes along with Pluto. He will talk about uh, uh, justice. That's Jupiter. He'll talk about vision. That's Neptune. So by and large, I think uh, probably uh, Biden will come out better from this debate than Trump. And this is an aspectarian showing Biden's transits on this day. And so you can look at that in a little bit more detail. There are other sesquiquadrants and semi-squares I don't talk about. I just talked about the things that look most important to me. Okay. So that is going to end this presentation. So I stops uh, sharing. I'm back. And so that's uh, part one of uh, Trump v. Biden. So I hope that gives you a little bit more clarity on the astrological weather ahead. In part two, I'll talk about the Republican National Convention, the Democrat National Convention, the second debate, the impact of the October solar eclipse on each candidate, if indeed they do make it that far, to election day. And I'll talk about election day itself, assuming that they are both still the candidates on election day. So there's a lot more to come. Uh, part two will be quite interesting. I hope you found this quite interesting. I hope it gives you some clarity on the astrological weather that both uh, Donald Trump and Joe Biden will have to deal with between now and election time and actually over the next year from June 2024 through May of 2025. And so I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you join me again for part two. But for now, I'll just say so long and be well.